All right, so make sure the volume's on. Yeah, I'm good. All right, so uh, this is bringing us right up to the end of uh, using advanced shape editing with floors and roofs. There's a lot more advanced modeling to get into, but we're almost at the end of chapter 14. We've come a long way, 630 pages. All right, so creating a roof with a sloped topping. Let's work through an exercise that shows you how to make a roof with a sloped topping like uh, the one we're about to make. <laughs> Open the C14 Roof Edit RVT. Well, we have that from the book, uh, the book's companion website, C14 Roof Edit.RVT or the metric version. And select the roof that has already been prepared for you. So if we go to the roof plan, we see there's a roof that's already been prepared for us. Steel truss insulation on metal deck EPDM. Now, just because we're inquisitive, if we type in EPDM roofing, what are we going to get? We're going to get images showing us all sorts of roofs with, with some membranes, right? And here's a synthetic roof rubber membrane. Here's a picture of it. So this might be good for the, uh, the cover of this video. So I'll put that in there. Anyway, these are the types of things you need to do when you're, uh, when you're working through a software. You need to uh, do research as you, as you go through. All right, so uh, we have it open. We have, the, uh, we have it selected. Take a look at it over here. All right, so uh, WT will title the views and ZA. We'll, uh, we'll orient the model in the center of the viewport. Actually, we have a roof plan open. We have a stopped elevation. And as you can see, roof is uh, on a little bit of an angle. So, uh, select the roof that has already been prepared to activate the edge split line tool. The color of the rest of the model grays out while the tool lines are dashed green, while the roof lines are dashed green. So activate the split line tool. Sketch two ridge lines that divide, sketch two ridge lines to divide the roof into three areas that will be independently drained. The ridge lines will be drawn in blue. Well, three, no, two ridge lines. Using the same tool, draw diagonal lines within those areas to create the valleys. Okay. Well, edge split line. The way the uh, into three areas. Okay. Well, so that would be one. That would be three areas. The ridge lines will be drawn blue. Using the same tool, draw diagonal lines within those areas to create the valleys. Well, that would give us a valley here. Oop, undo, I missed it. That'll give us a valley here. Make sure you get to the edge of the roof. And we give another one here. And we do the same thing on this roof section. If I could select it, got it, and then up to this one. And we continue on with the third one. Got it. And from here, Here, to there. Make sure you zoom in closely when drawing the diagonal lines and be sure that you are snapping in the exact same dividing points. If you notice that the split lines are not snapped to the correct points, select the modify sub elements tool, pick the incorrect lines, delete them, and try again. You have split the roof surface into many regions, but they are still all at the same height and pitch. You should have a roof that looks like figure 14.43, which it does. And if we look at the south elevation, 
it does reinforce that point. They all are it's still a flat roof, and all of these sections of the roof are still not pitched. Now, um, press the escape key or click the modify button to stop the editing mode. So we'll go to the modify button. Let's just select it again. And you see that we have all these points, right? We have all these points that we have splitting the surface. We're adding a split line. Switch to a 3D view. We don't have any yet, so let's make one. To add a slope, you need to edit the height of the drainage points or the heights of the edges and ridges created by the split lines. For this exercise, you will raise the elevation of the boundary edges and ridges. Activate the Modify Sub-Elements tool and select an edge of the roof dash green line. Select the um, Modify Sub-Elements tool. Modify Sub-Elements tool. And as you can see now, there's we can select the edges. Keep in mind, that's the bottom, that's the thickness of it, right? And select an edge of the roof. New controls that allow you to edit the text will appear. And you can either move the arrows up or down or type in a value for the height. Type in one foot. And just keep an eye on the left south, left elevation, south elevation. You can see it's starting to uh, come into shape, come into form. Repeat step seven for all boundary edges and the two north-south split lines forming the ridges between the drainage areas. So all the edges, let's see if I can select, no, I can't select them all at once. I could select that one. Let me see if I can hit control. Now I gotta do one by one. So one foot, one foot, did I get it? One foot. One foot, one foot, one foot, one foot, one foot, and we got this one right, that's one foot, and then the ones that divide the sections. One foot, uh, one foot. Okay. Make a section through the roof if possible. Somewhere through one of the drainage points. Open the section, change the detail level to find to see all layers. The entire roof structure is now sloped towards the drainage point. Okay, so we can create a uh, Get out of that command. Let's create a view through the drainage points. Well, let's go to a, a WT for window or tile, a ZA for all of them. And let's go to the roof plan. And let's create a section through the drainage points. So let's just make it right through here. And let's open that section view. ZA, WT, ZA. As you can see, it's created a, a slope between all the drainage points. Now, if I was to go to 3D view, duplicate this view, and I was to uh, go to 3D copy one, orientate this view to that section cut, we'll get just that section cut in 3D view. Hold on. Just that section cut shave it away for us. Now I'm just going to close tab, close inactive, and let's take a look now. Let's put on some uh, hidden lines. Look, let's shade it. And let's take a, let's just roll around a little bit in 3D. And you can see how, if I uh, edit these control points, get a better idea, turn the shadows on, 
See if that'll help a little bit. Yeah, you can see how it now, if there was a, uh, a train, these roofs are all pitched down each segment so that it would drain uh, down through a, a storm. PVC, Schedule 80, Schedule 40. All right, so that's, uh, that's the entire roof structure is now sloped towards the drainage point. That's what, uh, that's what we're looking at doing. Now, applying a variable thickness to a roof layer, what if you wanted the insulation to be tapered but not the structure? For that, the layers of the roofs can now have variable thickness. Let's see how to apply a variable thickness to a layer of the roof assembly. Continuing with the, with the c14roofedit.rvt, or the c14roofeditmetric.rvt from the book's companion website, select the roof, and in the properties palette, select edit type to view the roof style properties. Click edit in the structure row to edit the layers of the roof assembly. If we go to edit type, we'll select the roof, edit type, go to structure, and we'll get the edit roof assembly. And as you can see, there are lots of parameters built in, but this roof just happens to have a few layers. That's finish layer, finish one, with a cut hierarchy of four, a thermal air layer, uh, uh, layer two, with a cut hierarchy of three, and two structural layers, a metal deck, and a structural steel, steel bar joist, which is 16 inches. And the uh, metal decking itself is a quarter of an inch. Uh, and the thermal air layer is five inches, and the thickness of the finish layer is a quarter of an inch. So, now that we're in the edit assembly dialog box, um, activate the preview, and you will notice that in the roof structure preview, you do not see any slopes. That is correct and will not change. This preview is just a schematic preview of the structure and does not show the exact sloping. Look for the variable column under the layers as shown in figure 14.44. This allows layers of the roof to vary in thickness when slopes are present. Check the variable option for the insulation material. Well. The insulation will be right here and the variable will be there. Go back to the section view and observe the changes in the roof assembly. As you can see, only the insulation is tapered while the structure remains flat. Well, let's take a look. Apply. Just take a look at some of these analytical properties for all you gearheads out there. Let's take a look at the section view. Look at it in fine detail. Ah, well, as you can see, just the insulation is sloped and not the structure of the roof itself. You will only be able to modify an adjustable layer of a floor or roof with a negative value to the next non adjustable layer of the assembly. In the previous exercise, for example, if you modify the drainage points, by more than negative uh, 5 inches or negative 140 millimeters, an error would be generated and the edits to the roof would be removed. You must think about the design requirement of your roof or floor assembly when planning how to model adjustable layers. An alternative approach to the previous exercise might have been to increase the thickness of the insulation layer in the roof assembly to that required at the high pitch points. The drainage points could then be lowered relative to the boundary edges of the ridge line. Now, what does that mean? That means that if I select this roof and I go back to edit type and go to the assembly, if it's less than five inches, well, that's going to cut into the structure. So you're going to get an error message. The only thing we do would be to make this thicker and then negate those points further. So if you needed an extra inch, make this six and then come down negative five, right? All right, so that's the thought process behind that. It's inversely proportional. All right, so the bottom line, understanding, uh, understand floor modeling methods. Floors make up one of the most fundamental sketch-based system families used in a Revit model. You can customize them to accommodate a variety of assumptions at various stages of design. Master it. How can you create a structural floor with integrated metal decking? Model various floor finishes. Thick and thin floor finishes can be created to support tagging, scheduling, and quantity takeoffs. Master it. How would you represent a thin finish material in your project, such as carpet? Create ceilings. Ceilings are sketch-based families, system families, that can host objects such as light fixtures and HVAC diffusers. 
master it. What is the best way to model a ceiling within a space? Understand roof modeling methods. Roofs can be modeled as simple single pitch shed roofs or complex extrusions of sinuous curves. Master it. What is the best way to create a single vault roof? Work with advanced shape editing for floors and roofs. A small but powerful tool set is available for extended editing of floor and roof objects. These tools allow you to create warped floor slabs and tapered layers of roof assemblies. Master it. How do you create a drainage point in a flat roof slab? Okay, so a lot of information in that chapter, but we've got through it. Uh, hopefully it's been useful. I know it's always useful to me when I practice these exercises. Um, and you're going to need to know this from either side of the spectrum. From an engineering, architectural, MEP perspective, it will be advantageous to you to work through this book because not only um, does Revit have an effect on projects, but again, I'll say it again, it has an effect on people that are using it and the organization um, that they're using it in. And I'm not looking to change every organization's culture, but uh, it, it has helped me uh, in my career. So I'm, uh, I'm sticking to it, and uh, hopefully in the uh, next few releases, it'll just get better and better and better. So on that note, we're at Chapter uh, 15, Designing with the Family Editor. Now, we've done this a little bit, editing in place, but now that we're in the Family Editor, hopefully it'll, it'll really uh, get a little more granular because uh, we bring in a lot of families and manufacturers create families, and um, we need Colby compliant models, um, and there's a lot to it. Uh, so we're going to take it slow, and uh, hopefully we'll have the luxury of time, which we haven't had in the last, uh, what, uh, 30 years in this industry? Usually it's uh, <laughs> learn as you go, trial by fire. Uh, but you do get a 30-day trial with the software, uh, and you can, uh, it's free to educators, the software. But in a commercial environment where you're actually plotting and you need to produce contract documents, you're going to need to purchase the subscription. And uh, you can look into that. But I want to end that chapter on, on uh, that note. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting in, into designing with the family editor. And then there are, uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're almost done. Stay focused. Hopefully everyone's had their coffee.